Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's Assemble Tech Corner. My name is Nate Coombs. I'm the customer engineer here at Assemble Systems. And today, I'm going to be walking you through how to navigate our 3D viewer within Assemble. So what you see here is our main Assemble user interface. From left to right here, as most of you might know, we have our model tree, our inventory, and our 3D viewer. So today, I'm just going to be working on a 3D viewer. So I'm going to get rid of our model tree and collapse our inventory. So now we have this viewer to work with. I'm going to be taking you some of the more basic features and functions of the 3D viewer and then get into all of the different things that we can support and the different ways you can use to navigate your models. I'm going to start by the very simple picks and clicks and then get into some of the more advanced features you'll see up here in the top left. So just to get started, if you're using a, three, a wheeled mouse, you can very easily, to, to orbit the model, it's as easy as clicking and dragging and you'll see the model begins to orbit. To pan the model, all you do is click the, the mouse wheel and you can now pan back forth. And to zoom in and out, it's as easy as zooming or scrolling up or down on the wheel of your mouse. You can also zoom using the little features down here. So you can zoom in and out using the plus or zoom out using the minus. If at any point you get in, a, in an uncomfortable position, you see that I've now gone off the page, you can return to the home by selecting the reset camera button. If you have any items selected in your viewer and you would like to zoom to it, you can use this zoom extents, which is the little bullseye icon. And that'll pull you right to whatever items you have selected, whether they've been selected in the 3D viewer or the inventory. And to pull back out, you select that button again and it'll pull you back to your starting camera position. The next thing I'm going to focus on is, the, is some of our keyboard and mouse controls that we have available within our system. And all of these things can be found up here in the top right under the keyboard shortcuts tab. And under here, you'll see all of our assembled keyboards and mouse controls and all the shortcuts that go along with that. And you can find these in general viewer, which we're going over today or in the sheets. So for the viewer, if you scroll down, you'll see all the available functions and features that involve the, the clicking in the keyboard of our, of our system. So I'm just gonna get that. And so next thing I'm gonna do is work on taking a walkthrough of the model. And I'm gonna do this by scrolling in closer, orienting myself where I can enter the building, and I'm just gonna zoom in. And by using W, A, S, and D, kind of like a, a video game, you can go in and now navigate your model. W being forward, S being backwards, A being look left, and D being look right. So now that I have these, features down, I can now come in here and, and basically take myself on a walkthrough of this, of this structure. If I want to look up, I can press R. If I want to look down, I can press F. And if I'd like to move up and down in the plane, I can use up and down on my arrow keys. And left and right will take you left and right in that plane as well. So now that I can come through and, and walk through the model, I can now select items if I need to see, if I want to select them and see their properties, I can very easily select these while on the interior of the model. And if I'd like to quick hide anything, I can very quickly press Q and that'll add items to quick hide. So this is very different than our visibility settings that you may be familiar with. Those visibility settings affect the, the visibility of the items across the entire site. So in the inventory and the viewer. For quick hide, these things are only affecting the visual of the item within the 3D viewer. So these items are still gonna be in the inventory even when I come in here and press Q and quick hide them. So now that I've gone through and quick in a couple of things, I can come in and do a few more if I, if I feel necessary. Just quickly hiding items left and right. And whenever I want to go back out or get these items back, all I can do is press this little X and you see the rest of those items will come back into view. So now that I'm done on my tour of my model, I've looked up and down, I've taken a good, good look around this model, I can come back out to the rest of the model itself. So now that I've gone through all of that information, I'll touch on our settings. So these things are going to affect some of the items up here, mostly the opacity of these different items, and you can change that information very quickly here. And you'll always be able to reset everything to default down here in the bottom left. Here you can come in and change the, so that there's no 3D access, or if you wanna change the proje projection mode from perspective to orthographic, you can very easily do that as well. You can also change the background color of the 3D viewer. I generally like to look at work in white, but if you'd like to work in a, in a background color, you can very easily add a color here. And like I mentioned before, changing the opacity of, of X-ray and ghosting are two things that I'm gonna touch on in just a moment. If you've made any changes to this viewer settings, all you have to do is press apply 
and it will apply all the changes you made to the OAP model as a whole. So the next thing I'm going to touch on here is ghost mode. So I'm going to come in and actually turn my inventory back on to just do a little bit of grouping, sorting, and filtering here. So I'm actually going to quickly create a rule that's going to hide some of the items in our system. So let's just say we want to see only the doors and windows in the project. When I come in here and do this doors and windows, when I click update, you'll see that the doors and windows are now only things visible in our 3D viewer. All the functions are the exact same way for navigation, except now if we want to see all the items that have been hidden using this visibility rule, we can turn on ghost mode. What ghost mode is going to do is going to overlay all of the hidden items on top of the currently visible items. And now if I want to see these selected items, I can very easily select them and see them in, in reference to the shell of this whole model. If I want to change the opacity, you see that I just did that. I can quickly come up here and change that and it'll update the, the darkness of my, of my ghost mode. And to turn it, you can toggle this on and off very quickly and easily and work with it. And I like to specifically, when showing changes, this is something that you can try on your own, but I like to use this when you show changes because it gives you a little frame of reference and where the items were changed in your model versus just showing you them in open space. So just something to keep in mind, but I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna exit out and I'm going to update to bring back the rest of the information in our model. So the next, the next things I'm going to go over are our different rendering styles. So by default, we're always going to be using the shaded rendering style, but we do have three others here that you see that we can work with. So the first I'm going to go over is shaded with edges. So shaded with edges is very similar to the default shaded, except for you see now that our model has a little bit harder lines for the edges. And this could come in handy with our next function measurement tool that I'll, I'll touch on in just a few moments. The other features we have here are x-ray and hidden lines. So for x-ray, I'll just select once again the doors just to keep everything organized. And you see that when I do this, you see some items selected on the exterior as you would imagine because we're selecting doors, but a large number of these items that I've selected are hidden by the exterior envelope of the model. So to get view of these items, rather than having to go through and hide everything, what I can do is come into the rendering styles and go to x-ray. And what this does is x-rays out everything in the model except for the items you've had selected. So if I deselect doors, you see nothing's going to be selected in this x-ray mode. But if I go in and select anything else, now if I go in and select floors, you see those floors are now going to be highlighted in this x-ray. And I now have access to view these things without having to go through and change the visibility of everything. So it's very easy to now coordinate and use x-ray mode to view the information more simply and easily. And the last thing I want to touch on in rendering styles is our hidden line. So a hidden line is kind of a cross between our x-ray mode and our shaded with edges. So when I go to hidden line, you see we get a black and white outline of the model itself while still retaining the view of all the items that have been selected, even though they're, they're hidden by the interior exterior shell of the model. So now we come in here and we can see all these items without having to go through and hide things once again while still retaining the actual structural integrity of the, the model itself. So I'm going to go back to our default shaded and continue on, but that's our rendering styles. And the next thing I'm going to go into is, is measurement. So actually, rather than shaded, I am going to use shaded with edges for this. I'm actually just going to collapse our inventory once again so we have a little bit more room to work. For our measurement tool, you can come in here and select their measurement tool and now take measurements in two different ways. So we can do this from point to point. So you see as I, as I get close to any of these items, it's going to snap to the edges of these lines. So this is going to be point to point measuring. So I can now use this to create horizontal or vertical measurements all by point to point. So like you see it's snapping to all the edges here and it's going to be keep, kept true by the edges of the model. Even more functional is our measure by edge length. So now I can come in here and take full measurements of ed edge lengths vertically and horizontally quickly using this tool rather than having to go through it and figure out where I'm going from point to point. So I can now come in here and add these measurements quickly and easily and use them if I need, if need be. And I can always come in here and get rid of them. I can see all the X, Y, and Z values. And that is true for all of the, the measurements as well. We can come in here and see the dimensional information with all of them or just click on the trash to get rid of them. And if we would like to toggle these on and off, we can just deselect the measurement and it will toggle them on and off. And if we would like to remove them, you can just select remove all. 
So now that we've done this, we'll move on to our, our explode function. So this function features very well with mechanical model because generally in a mechanical model, you have a lot of really tiny different elements and a lot of things are in a small proximity from one another. So by being able to explode the model, what we can do is basically pick everything apart which now allows us to get a little bit of insight on how things are interacting with one another within the model. It allows us to also see items that may be selected on the interior and not be able to be seen through the, the exterior envelope of the model, like, like we ran into with our X-ray mode. So now we can use this explode, and we can do it to any degree we'd like. If we'd like to explode it all the way, we can pull that all the way apart. If we'd like to explode it ever so slightly, we can do that as well. But now that I have this exploded, I can take myself on a tour of the exploded building if I, if I see fit. I can come in here and, and get an idea of how these small items are interacting with one another and get a better idea of how my, how my structure is actually going to be constructed. And like, I, like the other functions, I can always to or toggle this on and off at any point, and I can always turn it off very quickly and easily. So the next thing that I'm going to show is our se sectioning tools. So one thing to note before I, I feature this function for you guys is the fact that these sectioning tools only currently affect the, vis the visibility of the items in the 3D viewer. So when I section items out, as you're going to see, items that it's not going to change the quantities of these items at all. This is only going to be a visual function as of now. This is something that we're working on to, to have also affect the, the quantities, but currently it only is going to be visual. So to sample this, you just turn on the little sectioning tool in the top left of your model. And we allow you to create a section box in all three X, Y, and Z planes. I don't have to do all, th all six planes, but for, this, for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to. And so now we can take in any, in any direction a section cut of this model. So if I want to section down to say the first floor, I can very easily do that. I can turn these planes off with the show planes toggle. And now you see that I have a section cut of this plane in just my one section. If I want to come in here and now section out in more than one direction, I can select these items in a few different planes. I can quickly and easily select those planes and section out the items in this regard. So now I can hide these planes once again and work with only that specific area that I'm working with. The last thing I'll touch on is the availability to jump to a viewpoint. So now that I'm going to turn off our sectioning and I'm gonna set my model up in, in a random orientation. And so now say I wanna get a top view and all of these numbers you see here are keyboard numbers. So for if I want a front view of this model, all I have to do is press two and it will give me a front view of this, of this model. Now I can zoom in to get a better look or if I wanna see, so let's see we want a top view, I can see number five. So now I can select number five and it'll give me a top down view of this and so I can also do this by selecting these in this window. So if I want a back view, I can select back and it'll bring me to that view. Any of these things will take you to the, to the, the viewpoint you're looking for. So just to recap of everything that I've gone over, I touched on the different ways to basically navigate the model using your mouse, all the different keyboard and mouse controls and settings. And I went over all of our different features and functions in the 3D viewer. If anyone has any questions at all, feel free to email support at assemblesystems.com. Thanks so much, and we'll talk to you at the next Assemble Tech Corner.